Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to learn about doing the hidden crochet cable. This is a technique I use to make the Inish Moore blanket. This is a beautiful crochet cabled blanket that is sized for baby or throw size, your choice, and it uses the fantastic billow yarn from Recrochet or Knit Picks. You can get it at both of those sites. It comes in some really fantastic colors. You could choose any of these colors and make a blanket that would be perfect for your home decor. In this video, I will show you how to do the foundation double crochet, how to work that hidden cable crochet technique, and how to do those post stitches that you need to do on the right side of this blanket. Believe it or not, this blanket can be done in a weekend. I made the baby size in a weekend. I know you can do it too. With my simple instructions and a couple of tips along the way, you will be set and ready to grab that hook and get started. This pattern is available at marleybird.com. If you take a look over there, you can see the pattern is free on my website or you could purchase the ad-free PDF, which is absolutely stunning and beautiful. All of the details for this pattern are written in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say. All right, why don't you go ahead, grab yourself some yarn and a hook just to get started and play around with these stitches with me, and then you can get the yarn you wanna use for your actual blanket. Let's just kind of play around with some here at the beginning. All right, let's do this. The Inish Moore Crochet Cable Blanket is a beautiful piece that, like I said, uses the hidden crochet cable technique. And you might be asking yourself, well, what does that mean? I can see the cables, they are not hidden. What do you mean by the hidden crochet cable technique? Well, here's what it is. If you've done crochet cables before, you know that typically you get a big gap behind where you do those cable stitches, okay? But when you use the hidden crochet cable technique, what happens is that you only work these post stitches on the front of your fabric, and when you're on the wrong side of your fabric, you work double crochets across all of the fabric, making it so that you don't have any holes uh, behind your cables. The entire fabric is one lovely, stunning piece making this really great and reversible. It allows the cable stitches to really pop off the fabric. And like I said, there's no real hole behind any of these post stitches. So it's a lot of fun to do. Now, the great thing about this particular cable pattern is that actual cables where you have post stitches over post stitches, you only do those every now and again. Like you don't do them very often. A lot of these cable stitches are traveling stitches. That's what they're called in knitting. I'm pretty sure that's what they're called in crochet as well. But you work these post stitches to make it look like this cable is traveling across your fabric. And when the post section crosses over another post section, that's where you actually get a crochet cable. Otherwise, these these are just traveling stitches that we're using to really raise up the fabric to give it a more three-dimensional view and it allows for the cable to actually show it's you know going over and under and over and so on and so forth. Now, this cable pattern is one you most likely are not going to find in any other crochet cable pattern or book because I actually got it from a knitting pattern. I found this knitting pattern in a wonderful stitch dictionary, loved it so much, and converted it over into a crochet pattern, and this was the result. I love it so very much. It's a lot of fun to do, and it's really easy. So now that I've explained a little bit how the hidden crochet cable um, looks when it's finished, let's actually complete it. But before we jump into that, we have to begin with the foundation double crochets. For this video, I will be using Brava worsted weight yarn and a size H crochet hook. If you actually end up using the billow yarn, you will use a larger crochet hook, but I liked the way the Brava looks as I'm doing these stitches, so I'm gonna be using this. 
We will begin with a slip knot, just like you do for most crochet projects. And we are going to then create foundation double crochets. Now I used foundation double crochets for this blanket because it's a really great transition into the actual cable pattern. It looks like it's uninterrupted. So that's why we work with the foundation double crochet. So let me show you how to do those. As I mentioned, you start off with your slip knot and you will chain three. One, two, three. Yarn over your hook and we will go back to the first chain you did or the third chain from hook and insert your hook into that chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through one loop. I'm gonna have you pause right there, and if you have a stitch marker handy, one of these lovely reverse or removable ones, I want you to put that stitch marker into that chain that you just created by going through that loop, okay? I'm gonna put that chain or that stitch marker through that chain because that's exactly what that is. That stitch right there, that chain, is what we will work into to create the next foundation double crochet, all right? So we've created essentially our foundation chain and now we have three loops left on our hook. Now we just complete a double crochet as usual. So you yarn over your hook, draw through two, yarn over your hook, draw through two. So now we have two foundation double crochets. You yarn over your hook, go into the chain that I marked I like to go through not just one loop like this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I don't like to just go through one. I like to make sure that I'm going through two loops. So essentially the back, um, the back leg of the stitch and the butt of the stitch of the chain. I like to do that. I think it makes a really nice finish on the bottom. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, draw through one. Again, that one right there, that is where you will put your stitch marker because that lets you know that's where you're gonna create the next double crochet. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. It's not too difficult, right? Let's do another one. Yarn over your hook. Come down here to the marked stitch. I like to go through to where I have two, two loops, you see that? Yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, draw through one. Okay, so now I've created that chain. I could take my stitch marker and move it up one. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, go into that chain. Yarn over your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, draw through one. Move your stitch marker up. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. That's not too difficult, right? Now the foundation double crochets are used in this blanket, like I said, because it really makes a perfect transition into those cable stitches. As you take a look, you can see that it has a lot of elasticity to it, so we aren't gonna have a chain edge that's going to like be a little bit smaller than the rest of the fabric after we've created it. And we've already created these really lovely double crochets the wrong side of our fabric. And there you go. You now know how to do a foundation double crochet. Like I said, it's perfect for this blanket because it makes a natural transition from our beginning edge into the actual fabric for the blanket. But this is a great technique or skill to use on other projects as well. There are a lot of patterns out there that call for it, especially if you're doing like top down sweaters or pieces that you don't want the beginning to be um, way super tight. The foundation double crochet or single crochet or half double crochet or all the foundation type stitches are very useful and they're all created in this very similar manner of chaining that first one so you have something to work into and then working the stitch afterwards pretty simple right okay so for our little example here our little lesson I want you to go ahead and get 24 foundation double crochets completed because that's what we will work on for our sample in the video 
If you're jumping right to the blanket, take a look at the pattern and see how many you need to do in order to make the baby blanket or the throw size blanket. Remember, the pattern is available over at marleybird.com or you could purchase the ad-free PDF. The link is right down there in the video description box below. All right, get those 24 foundation double crochets and then we'll move on to the next step. 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, so I have 24 foundation double crochets completed on my end, and I'm ready to move on to the next step. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna push this aside real quick, and we're going to bring in the pattern portion of this piece. This right here is the ad-free PDF version of this pattern. You can see that I have color coded some of the special stitches of the pattern to make it easier for you as you're working along. It's really quite easy to use and it's a lot of fun. So we have worked up the setup row, okay? And obviously we're doing a different number than this because we are working a sample here for the video. Row one, we are going to chain one and then single crochet in each double crochet across. This is going to be our right side row. Whenever we are working right side rows, we will work single crochets or post stitches depending on what the pattern calls for, okay? So single crochets or or post stitches. What you will notice on row two and every wrong side row, we will begin with a stacked double crochet. I'll show you how to do that. It's going to blow your mind if you've never done it before. And then we will do double crochets in each single crochet across. Now, here is a tip on those wrong side rows throughout the pattern in order to achieve that hidden crochet cable technique without any holes behind our cables or our post stitches we will work those double crochets on the wrong side so whenever we come up to a single crochet or a post stitch and the stitch that we skipped for that post stitch, you'll see what I mean in a minute, we will work through both of those stitches. We'll work through the entire fabric so that way we don't have any stitches left behind or any holes just hanging out there. Everything is gonna be nice and clean and uniform. So on your wrong side rows, it becomes sort of like those, those easy, okay, I could take a break, take a sip of my coffee, eat my biscotti uh, sort of rows because you don't have to think too much because they're just double crochet rows. It's on the right side rows that you have to do a little bit more thinking because you have the single crochets and those post stitches. So what I wanna do right now, let's go ahead and chain one and single crochet across all of our doubles. And then I'm gonna show you how to do that stacked double crochet and we will work double crochets across all of our singles. It's only after that we finally get to do some uh, cables and front post treble stitches. Once we do those, like you seriously are gonna be on your way. You're gonna be like, oh, I see how to do this. So let me go ahead, let's move this. You can bring in your 24 foundation double crochets, which is what we're doing for our video. You can chain one and turn or turn and chain one. It doesn't matter. And then put 24 single crochets across the row. When you get to the end of the row, that's when we will do that fantastic stacked double crochet, which makes a beautiful edge, a lovely finish, and it's something that if you don't use it yet, you're gonna use it all the time. Don't forget to put that last single crochet into that chain at the very end when we started with our foundation doubles, and you should have 24 single crochets. All right, so let's do our stacked double crochet. What the stacked double crochet does is it takes the place of what would be the chain three to begin a row or a chain, th chain three or two and then a double crochet to begin the row. It lets the beginning stitch really look like a double crochet. If you notice, I've already turned my work. I didn't chain, I didn't do anything, I just turned my work. I'm gonna go into this very first stitch yarn over, pull up a loop, so I have two loops on my hook, just like when I do a single crochet. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops on my hook. Now I'm gonna grab my little tool here to show you. This was my first loop on my hook. This was my second loop on my hook. 
what I want to do is I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to pierce between those two loops just like that and create another single crochet. All right, so we're going to put the single crochet right there between those two loops. Put that down. So I take my hook, go right between those two loops, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook, yarn over and draw through two. Take a peek at that. It looks like a double crochet, right? I essentially stacked two kind of slightly modified single crochets to create a double crochet. So it's called a stacked double because the action of the stacked stitches results in a double crochet. If we stacked three of them, it would have been a stacked treble, so on and so forth. That's why this isn't called a stacked single because that wouldn't ultimately tell you what your final stitch is. It's called a stacked double crochet because we stacked two singles to create a double. Make sense? So at the end of this, you'll see that you still have that V right there behind the loop on your hook, which is the top of your stitch. And now you have this beautiful double crochet looking stitch that doesn't have any wonkiness sticking out. There's no gaping holes and it just looks lovely. So I think like no gaping holes is the theme of this blanket, right? Once you get that stacked double crochet, you go ahead and just carry on working double crochets across the entire row. And remind, remember, this is the wrong side row. So whenever we are on a wrong side row for this blanket, this is going to be our, our sequence. We're going to double crochet across the whole row. And it will um, only change up if you have stitches other than just single crochets on here because if we had our post stitches on here we would be working through our um, post stitch and the stitch that we skipped to create that post stitch and that will make more sense here in a minute but i just want to throw that out there so as you're watching this on repeat you could be like oh, okay i know what that means she always gives me the information I need before I need it because she knows I'm going to need it. <laughs> it's like I'm clairvoyant like that. Um, I just try and make sure you get all the information that you need so you're ready to create something beautiful, whether it's this blanket or something else in the future. When we get to the end of this row, we will turn our work and that will be our first right side row with some actual cable stitches and post stitches. So that's where the, the action really begins, okay? So I have finished this row. Doesn't look like we've done much yet, right? We have not done much. This is our wrong side. We turn our work, we're back to our right side. And this is where we're going to get started. So it's at this point, I'm going to bring in not only the written pattern, but we're going to take a look at the chart because I find the chart so easy to follow and I'm hoping you do too. And that's why I had you do the 24 foundation double crochets because the chart shows us 24 stitches. So let's get that pattern and the chart. Back to the pattern we were looking at earlier, we have completed the setup row, row one and row two. We are now on row three. If you work through the written instructions, you can get the same result that we're going to work through together. But you can see here, we begin with the chain one, and then you have a star right here, or the asterisk. That's your, your indication that it's at that point you are going to repeat instructions at some point. It says we will single crochet in the next six double crochet. Then we will do a two over two right cable. Now the two over two right cable, the instructions for that are written in the special stitches. I will show you how to do that here, but you will also notice that the color coded um, part of the pattern in, is also color coded in the um, special stitches also. So it says we'll do a two over two right cable over the next four stitches. So it's going to take four stitches to create this right cable, all right? Now we have a bracket. Now the bracket indicates that whatever is written inside of this bracket will be done the number of times outside of the bracket. So inside this bracket, we have single crochet in the next four doubles. Then we have a front post treble crochet. Again, that's written in your special stitches. In the next two stitches, two rows below. 
And then we would come up here and we would do all that again, right? Because it says we have to do that twice. Then we have our semicolon and it says repeat from star. So there's our star right up there across to the last two stitches, single crochet in the last two stitches and turn. Pretty easy, right? All right, so we read through this. Let's take a look at our chart because this is important. I gotta take a peek up here. All right, so our chart, you'll notice in the pattern, both in the free and in the ad-free PDF, it looks like you have two charts, right? Well, yes, there are two charts here, but they are the same chart, just shown a little bit different. I wanna show you why. Right here, you'll see this is the cable stitch diagram. This diagram not only shows you the cable stitches and the traveling stitches, but it shows you those double crochets behind those cable stitches and the traveling stitches. Those are the double crochets you will complete on the wrong side rows. And sometimes seeing those double crochets behind these cable stitches or traveling stitches can get things a little confusing. You can look at this chart and be like, man, there's so much going on, I don't know what to do. So what we did was over here in this chart, it's the exact same chart, however, we removed those double crochets that are actually still going to be there in the actual work. They're still going to be worked right there on row two. However, we removed them from the chart to make it easier for you to see those traveling stitches and the cable stitches. Does that make sense? So both charts are the same, but they're both provided for you so that way you can decide which one works better for you visually, all right? You can decide which whichever you want. Um, you'll notice I have post-it notes here and that's because I always like to, to show everybody, I love to use post-it notes and I will always block off the stitches that I have not done yet. I want to be able to see the stitches that I've done because we are going to work into the stitches that we've done, right? We're gonna work into these stitches that we've done. These ones up here that we haven't worked into yet, I don't need to know what those are. I just need to know what the stitches are beneath the ones that we've done. Does that make sense? Okay, so looking at these sort of just like right here together. Hopefully, let me make sure you can see that. Yep, you can see. All right, so we have row three. We started with the chain one and then we had single crochet in the next six double crochet. So here is row three and then here is our chain one and then six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's when we went to our two over two right cable. Now, these cable stitches are worked with trebles, all right? So these are treble crochets, and they were worked into post stitches. And what you will notice is this treble crochet, it skips, okay. These treble crochets are worked into the single crochets we did on row one. They're worked around those post stitches of the single crochets we did on row one. So this first treble, we don't go into the, the single crochet beneath it. We don't go into the next single crochet beneath it. You work into the next one over. So if this is one, two, three, four, our first treble goes into number three. Our second treble goes into number four. Then we have the third treble. It goes behind the two you just created and it goes back over here to number one. And then our fourth treble goes behind the two you just created and comes back over here to number two. So even though we skipped these two singles to begin, we come back and work into them with these over here and that's what creates our cables. We're essentially just just crossing over our post stitches to create this lovely cable look. Once we do the two over two right cable, we have four single crochets, which is exactly what's written in the pattern. And then we have a front post treble crochet into that stitch down there, the single crochet, and another front post treble crochet into the stitch right down there. You see that? Okay. Did I say these are, are trebles? Those are double trebles. I'm sorry. I think I misspoke. Those are double trebles. So it's a double treble worked across, a double treble worked across. These are trebles. These are double trebles. I'll make sure I put a note, a little like, hey, double trebles. So that way you know. Um, but you carry on, you get to the end of this chart, and that would be your, um, the end of the, uh, the, um, 
I'm sorry, the repeat. And so you would repeat this however many times throughout your blanket until you get to the last two stitches and then you would just do two single crochets in the last two stitches. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to work this up now. I'm going to move the words, bring this down here. Let me check and make sure everything is still in place. Hopefully you can see. If you can't see the chart here on the video, make sure you're looking at the chart um, on your own. You can print that off off of the blog or it is already on your ad free PDF. And we will just jump right in. So to begin, we turn and chain one or chain one and turn, it doesn't matter. And we have six single crochets to begin with. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, here is where we're gonna begin our two over two right cable. Now it's called a right cable because it looks like the stitches that are on top, they lean to the right. So it's a double treble, which means we yarn over our hook three times. So one, two, three. Yarn over your hook three times. This is the double crochet. This is the single crochet beneath the double. So that's the first one. Here's the next double, there's the next single beneath it, so that's number two. Here's the next double, there's the next single beneath it, that's number three. It's this single right here that we wanna go around. So literally just put it to the right side of that single, around the back, come out the left side of that single, yarn over, and then bring that hook through the same path back. Yarn over your hook, draw through two, Yarn over your hook, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over your hook three times. Now, since we've established that that is the third one, it's as easy as just going over one more single crochet to find the fourth one. So you go over one more single crochet, go in the right, around the back, out the left, I know this goes without saying, but if you're left-handed, it's the opposite way. Yarn over your hook, follow that same path back to bring that loop up, and now we just work these off. Yarn over your hook, draw through two. 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 Okay, now we've gotta do the, the next two, but remember, they go behind these. So they are a little tricky, but we are going to work them into the single crochets over here. And again, because we've established that that's the third one, we just simply just count over, be like, all right, so that's the third, so there's the second, and there's the first. You can just kind of find them. So we start off, yarn over our hook three times, go underneath, underneath those cables. Literally just push them out of the way. Find the single crochet we wanna go around. So it's not that one, it's the first one we skipped, which is right over here. Okay, that's the first one we skipped. Again, I'm gonna go in the right side, around the back, out the left side. At this point, you're like, wait, my yarn, like if I come here, it's gonna go over top, it's, it's like out of the way, right? These, these stitches right here that we went under, move them. You see, I just move them away from the, the, the hook so I can get to my yarn. Can you see that? I just moved them away from my hook to get to my yarn. Yarn over your hook, pull that yarn through, right? Go out the same path you went in. And now yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, whoops, draw through two yarn over, draw through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over three times. Again, come underneath the two post stitches you started with, and we're gonna go to that second single crochet we skipped. I'm gonna go in the right side, around the back, out the left side. Take those post stitches, move them out of the way so that you can get to that stitch that you know we just went around. Yarn over. Have your hook go that same path back. Now you have the five loops on your hook, and so you just work them off. Yarn over, draw through two. 
yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. When you're all done, it should look a little something like this, right? We have skipped four double crochets there at the top. One, two, three, four, right? Four. Those four double crochets, we will work into those on our way back. We'll work into those and these together. That's the part I was saying that it will make more sense when we work it together. So that way we don't have these just kind of fall into the back, like just gaping out the back, or these fall into the front, gaping out the front. We want this fabric to be pinched together and we're pinching them together and working that double crochet on the wrong side. But for this purpose, we have those four double crochets, one, two, three, four, because we skipped those, right? We worked the post stitches into the singles beneath. So then the next double crochet, that's where we will do those singles. So we have four singles. So we have one, two, three, and four, okay? Now we have to do two treble, front post trebles. So we're gonna put a front post treble in front of this one into that single down there and in front of this one into that single down there. So for our treble, we yarn over our hook twice. We follow that double crochet down, find the single beneath it, go around the post of that single, which literally just, just go around the single. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over your hook twice, go to the next single over, and work a front post treble over that one. Two and two, okay? Again, remember you skipped two double crochets, so you go to the next one, and that's where you will do the four singles, so you'll do one, two, three, and four. Now we have the two front post trebles again. So yarn over your hook twice, follow that double crochet, come down to the single. So there's one. We do that again, yarn over our hook twice, come down to the next single, and there's two. Remember you skipped those two doubles, so you finish with the two singles here at the very end. One and two. All right, so as we set this down, doesn't look like much yet, okay? Does not look like much. And I also wanna tell you, I actually think this row is one of the most difficult rows because it's the one that you're really trying to find those single crochets in. Um, I find that the most tricky. On the, the next ones, as we're working these traveling stitches, you're gonna be working the post stitches around these post stitches we just created. So it makes things a lot easier. So this first one, in my opinion, is one of the harder rows because you're going around the post of that single crochet, which isn't you know really tall, like we're used to going around post of half doubles or doubles. It's just this little squatty single crochet and you're just gonna go around it to make it happen. But trust me, it works. All right, so this is what we have so far. Now, the next row is the important row when it comes to the hidden crochet cable technique. It's the one where I reminded you that you will do double crochets across the whole row. But when we come to a stitch where it's those post stitches and this, the double crochet we skipped behind the post, we're gonna work through both of those stitches together, almost like you're um, joining two fabrics together or seaming two fabrics together. We wanna make sure that we have everything closed up so we don't get any holes. First off though, we start off with our stacked double crochet. So let's go ahead. Remember, for the stacked double crochet, you do not chain. You simply turn your work. We're gonna go into this first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Then go between those two loops like you did before, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. That is your stacked double crochet. Now we're gonna do double crochets all the way down. So this first one is just a basic single that we're working into. So we'll do our just basic double crochet, right? 
and not that any of these are not basic they're all basic double crochets but this one right here right we have our two treble post or front post trebles right here so let me see if i can use stitch markers to make this visually appealing to you so we have that's the top of the post that's the top of the second post stitch and then this is the top of the double crochet we skipped and this is the top of the other double crochet we stitched skipped so what we want to do essentially is i want to take my hook and i'm going to put it through this top of that double crochet and through the top of the treble okay so i'm going to put it through both of those like that so if i were to take this blue one off you can see now i have this marker through this and that so that's where my hook is going to go so i'm going to show you that so i'm going to do a double so i'm going to yarn over my hook i'm going into that double crochet and i'm going into the top of the treble the front post treble all right so i went through both of those yarn over pull up a loop three loops on my hook yarn over draw through two yarn over draw through two okay here we go again so like i said this is the top of my double that I skipped. This is the top of the front post treble crochet. So what I'm gonna do is yarn over my hook, because we're doing a double, go into the stitch that I skipped, go into the top of the post stitch that I created. I can take these off now. I just use those to help you guys see what I'm doing. All right, so I have, there's the stitch I skipped, there's the top of the post stitch I created, Yarn over, pull up a loop, and then complete my double crochet. Okay, see how that gives me a nice solid fabric back here? And what it does up here is it makes it so I have no holes, but I still get this three-dimensional um, texture fabric up here, okay? I carry on, I go ahead and just do my doubles until I come across another one of those post stitches that is going to be combined with the double crochet. All right, so as you can see, this becomes, this becomes pretty, pretty easy, um, which makes it fairly easy to just follow along with the chart that you know, doesn't have the double crochets behind it. All right, so here we are. This time I'm not gonna use the markers. You can hopefully see. I'm gonna yarn over my hook, go into the, this is the, the top of the double crochet I skipped, and then this right here is the top of the post stitch I created. Yarn over, pull through both. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. I have another one here, so there's the double crochet I skipped, right there. And then there is the post stitch I created. I'm just going through the top of both of them. And then carry on. I'll do the same when I come down here to the cable. All right, everything's gonna be just the same. And this is what it's like every time you're on a wrong side row. And this creates that hidden cable. All right, so I have four, four double crochets here that we skipped, right? Because we have all of these cable stitches we created. So here is the stitch I skipped. There is the top of the post I created. Pull my yarn through and create my double. Yarn over, stitch I skipped post I created, stitch I skipped, post I created, and then one more, stitch I skipped, post I created, and then I finish up here. I should have six, or six double crochets to work across. Two, three, four, five and six pretty easy all right so as you can see here on the wrong side it looks like a very solid nice fabric nothing poking out and as we go to the wrong side I'm gonna go ahead and chain one because I'm gonna be working singles we already have this three-dimensional fabric getting started and these post stitches right here those are really where it begins to where we create those traveling stitches that are going to go across taking a look at the pattern on row five we can see we began with the chain one single crochet in the next four stitches then we have a front post double treble 
in the next two post stitches two rows below. That's gonna be really easy to find because it's literally the post stitches we just created. We don't have to find those single crochets anymore. So it makes things a lot easier. Then it says single crochet in the next four stitches, front post double treble in the next four post stitches, two rows below, single crochet in the next five stitches, front post double treble in the next two post stitches, two rows below, single crochet in the next five stitches. And then it says repeat from star across, ending at star star, where you have three stitches left and you'll do a single crochet in the last three stitches. So you end at star star at the very end of your blanket. So you just keep repeating from star until you get to the last three stitches of your blanket and that's when you'll end with the three single crochets. All right, so now that we've looked at the words, let's take a look at our chart one more time. Again, I take my post-it note and I move it up. So I didn't move it up for the double crochet row because it's just double crochets. I really don't have to be too concerned about that one, right? It's really these, these um, post stitches that I'm most concerned about. They're the ones that give me the most trouble. So let's go ahead and we are going to begin row five right here, okay? So I've already done my chain one, so I will single crochet in the first four stitches. So let's go one, two, three, four. Now, right here, you can see I'm doing a front post double treble and I'm coming all the way over here and I'm working it into the post stitch of that double treble, all right? So I'm creating traveling stitches. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook three times I skip all of this, right? I'm gonna come all the way over here, go underneath that post, yarn over, and then bring my hook back out, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So that was one. Do that again. So yarn over our hook three times, come all the way over here, go underneath the next post, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now those two post stitches take the place of that double crochet and that double crochet. And you already know when we come back, we will work through those two skip double crochets and the top of those post stitches on our wrong side. So if we skip those two, we now do a single crochet in the next four stitches, so here's one, two, three, and four. And we can tell here, we're gonna do a front post double, double treble all the way over here. We're gonna do them around these two post stitches from that cable. So we've taken this cable where all of those stitches were worked together, one right after the other, and look, we're moving them apart. We're putting four stitches between them so that we can create these, these traveling stitches, the traveling look. So we yarn over our hook three times, come over here to this post, right? You, got, you, you should easily find it because it's just sticking out there. Yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Do that again. Yarn over your hook three times. Go to the next post. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. You can see right here, there is not a single crochet done between these post stitches and these post stitches. Okay, so we have these two that are over there. Now we're gonna do these two stretched all the way over there. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook three times. I'm skipping all of this and I'm coming all the way over here to where these single two were that I did before, right? So I yarn over, pull up a loop, two, 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 and two. One, two, three go into that post or around that post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, 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 okay? So now I have four 
post stitches all done in a row, which means back here, I'm skipping four of these double crochets. And it's on the next one, right? So those four doubles take the place of what those four stitches are. So now I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five singles. One, two, three, four, five. Now I have a double treble. I'm gonna work right here around this post. You should know how to do these now by this point, so I'm not gonna talk through it. All right, you see those? And then you will skip the two doubles behind it and you finish off with the three singles. So one, two, and three. So as I set this down, you can see these these stitches here that we just did, these traveling stitches, like they worked over, you know, one stitch from where they were before. So you can see that's where they begin to travel to come across. And now that these four stitches, these four post stitches are coming, they're all one, two, three, four. I bet you on the next right side row, you'll see that there's a cable stitch that's gonna happen there. Cause these four stitches are gonna have to either, you know, one's gonna go over the other, like it's either gonna go this way or it's gonna go this way. So we'll be creating like a cable that we did down here. It'll happen right here. But this is where the stitches begin to come and just travel across. But they're all done by working these post stitches around the post that we've already established. So like I said, that first row that we did with those post stitches, to me, that's the most difficult because you have to go around those single crochets, right? It's they're tricky to find. But after that, once you've established them, you have all of these nice post stitches that are already like they're up there off of the fabric waiting for you to go and find them. All right, so we're on the wrong side without even looking at our pattern. We know what to do. We will turn our work, start off with our stacked double crochet. So I'll do the stacked double crochet. And then I will just do double crochets across the row. And remember, whenever you come to one of the stitches where you created a post, you have to go into this, the double crochet you skipped and the top of the post stitch that you created. So that way the back of the fabric is exactly what we want. We don't have any stitches, just kind of flailing out there. Um, somebody pointed out to me they were just like doesn't this squish the stitches doesn't it make the fabric too um you know a little bit less even and stuff because you're pulling up one row to meet another row it, it makes it perfect guys it makes it look really good um i don't have any issues with anything that i have created with this um the fabric is beautiful and if you are doing these stitches just like i am your fabric will come out just as beautiful it's a nice smooth fabric on the back you don't have any gaping holes on the front which makes it great if you wanted to do this for like a t-shirt or, or you know like a, a sweater and not have to wear a t-shirt underneath it because you didn't want your like your bra to show or something like there's just there's a lot of benefits to this particular technique N not even like I haven't even mentioned the fact that we haven't had to do any like back post stitches. You don't have to do any back post stitches when you do this technique because all of the stitches are done on the right side of the fabric. So everything is a front post stitch, um, making it very easy to complete, very easy to memorize and very easy to see. Like you don't have to overthink whether you're doing a back post or a front post or what's happening. Everything is a front post. The most difficult part, see how pretty that is? I mean, that just looks so pretty. The most difficult part, I think, is whenever you're doing those cables, you know, when you have to like move, move uh, the post stitches out of the way to make the cables work. But other than that, like, after you have completed that row where we worked around those singles, everything else is just worked around these post stitches, making it super easy. So this one, I just wanna kind of do one more with you guys because we are going to do a two over two left cable, which is exactly what I mentioned to you. And I'm not gonna pull in the words this time. We're just going to use our chart because I know you can look at the words on your own, but let's take a peek here. We are on row seven. So now we're gonna chain one. We have a single crochet in the first three. 
Then we have a double treble worked down in, around that post, a double treble worked around that post. Then we have one, two, three, four, five singles. Then we have a um, two over two left cable. So it's very similar to the two over two right cable. It's just instead of having to go underneath those two post stitches that you created, you're gonna go over top of them. Okay, so let's work this row together. We begin with our chain one, and then we have three singles. So one, two, and three. And just a reminder, if you can't see the chart on this video, you can always take a look at the chart from the pattern. We're gonna yarn over our hook three times and we're gonna come over here to this first post and we're gonna work our front post double treble. And then we do that again into the next one. This is establishing our traveling stitches going around. Oops. There we go. All right, don't forget to skip those two doubles that we, we essentially are skipping those so that we can work into those trebles. Go into the next stitch over and we will create a single crochet in the next five stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then right here, this is where we're gonna create our two over two left cable. So yarn over your hook three times. We're gonna not go into these two yet. We're gonna skip over here and come into these. We'll go into this first one right here and we'll create our front post double treble. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over two, yarn over two, yarn over two, yarn over two. Now, the last time we yarned over our hook three times and we went underneath those, right? That's a two over two right cable. For a two over two left cable, you go over top of them. Makes it super easy. Go underneath that first post right there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> Around the post, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then work off those stitches two at a time, just like before. And then we do it again. Yarn over your hook three times. Come over here to the next one. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. 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 So now you have a two over two left cable. Again, you are gonna skip those four double crochets behind it to go into the next one over. You'll do a single crochet in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And just like before, we're moving these stitches over by one, so we're having them travel over. So it's at this point, we will do our front post double trebles around these two post stitches. So they aren't actual cables, these are traveling stitches. They're post stitches that they are traveling across that eventually they will become part of a cable. And then you will skip those two doubles behind it and put a single in the next four stitches. Two, three, and four. All right. Looking good, right? Isn't that great? Now, the biggest thing you need to remember is as you're working down these rows, don't get confused with doing the right cable or the left cable. You wanna make sure that all of your stitches, all of your repeats across are all, they look like they're all intertwined, right? You don't wanna accidentally do a left cable on one of them and then a right cable on the next two, you know what I mean? So make sure that you're paying attention to that other than that, this is all you need to know for the Inishmore blanket. Like seriously, it's, it's those post stitches. How do you work those cables? And then the hidden cable, the, the back side, man, that is cake, right? Like working across, working those double crochets into all the stitches, it's not that hard and it makes for a beautiful finished fabric. Now, I did finish the entire blanket with a very, very, very simple border that you can do or you don't have to do. Either way works. Um, I don't think you need a lot of help with that, but let's take a look at the border itself so you can see exactly what I did.
Because of this beautiful cable stitch pattern and the lovely lumpy slubbiness of this beautiful cotton yarn, I didn't want the border to overpower the actual blanket. So what I did was I finished with two rounds of single crochets around the whole blanket. Don't overthink this. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as far as number uh, numbers go. You just want to make sure you get a nice even um, rows of single crochets so that your, your fabric doesn't pucker. And then in the corners, make sure you do three single crochets in the corners, all right? So that way you get a nice curve at the corners. Don't overthink this, it's really that easy. Two rounds of just single crochets, making sure it's all nice evened up and it lays nice and flat. It's on the final round that we add that little extra pizzazz to the piece. And it's one of the most simple stitches. I love it so very much. And I learned this from my friend, Tamara Kelly over at the Moogly blog. Like she uses this and I was like, this is fantastic. But it is really as simple as you will work around, you will do a single crochet, a chain three and a single crochet into one single crochet. And then you skip a single crochet and you do the single chain three single into the next. It, that's it, that's all it is. So you get this nice sort of Pico-esque look, bumpy look to the piece, and it just looks really nice and finished. It doesn't look like it's too much. I love the way it just, I love the balance of that with the texture of the actual cables. I think they look really great, um, but that's, that's what I did. So when I tell you you don't need me, really to tell you how to do this border or show you it's because you know how to if you've done all this you could do this border <laughs> this is not that hard um do i recommend the border i do it's only three rounds it's not too hard it does use up more yarn and i know that if you are on a yarn crunch or you're running out of yarn it might be something you're like mm, i'm not sure i want to do but if you have the option to add that border i think it's that nice little finishing touch that makes the the blanket absolutely perfect all right, so now you know how to do foundation double crochets. You know how to do the hidden crochet cable technique. You know how to do front post double trebles, front post trebles, two over two right cables, two over two left cables, and how to do this really simple border. <laughs> I hope you really enjoy making this blanket. It is a lot of fun to do. I love this cable stitch. It is it is just stunning. I want to add it to like a poncho or something like that. You know, I love I love my big poncho swancho pieces and I think this would be a really striking cable to have along the back of a of a cable of a poncho or even down the the arms of a swancho. I think that would be really really quite lovely. So, my point there is you can use this technique, you can use this, this stitch pattern, you can use everything you've learned today in future projects, which is perfection in my opinion. I love making it so that way you can take the tools from one project and be a better crocheter in the next. All right, everybody, I am Marley Bird. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I know it was a long one, but I hope you learned a ton and you will join me back here for more videos to help you become a better knitter or crocheter. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you are up to date whenever I release a new video and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye guys. Hey, real quick, if you make this blanket, don't forget to share with me on social media. Use hashtag Marley Bird, so that way I can find your project and smash your like button. All right, bye, for real. <laughs>